Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Harefield. I am uh, also known as an American monk. I had the opportunity in my life uh, early on in my early 20s to study in uh, monasteries in the Far East, India and Nepal. While there, I was taught some amazing principles on the art of manifesting, and I'd like to share some of that with you today. If you uh, choose, you can visit my website and you can get the full download uh, of the art of manifesting a monk's perspective uh, from my website at www.harefield.com. One of the things that most of us as humans don't realize is our full abilities. We are as infinite and as powerful as anything in the universe. Imagine this coming from a uh, Buddhist monk. In the book of Genesis, you'll find two statements supposedly that the Creator made. The first was, now you are just like me. And the second one says that you have dominion over all things. When we look into the book of Matthew, the great teacher of the Christ says, even the least among you may do these things, and greater things than these may you do. So what does it mean? It means we are more powerful than most of us fully realize. We have the power of creation within our entire being. What if you could have anything in life that you wanted? What if you could have everything in life that you wanted? Here's the amazing thing. You can. The only thing that stops us is our own selves and trusting in our own selves and in our own abilities. Uh, I'm going to offer you some principles in this video and then I'm going to ask you to apply them. And when it began, uh, I'd like to share this idea with you. What generally happens in your life when you have fond memories of a friend? When you focus on that friend and you have those memories of that person, what generally speaking occurs? Do you hear from them? Do you all of a sudden bump into them? And it doesn't matter whether you hear from them in an email or you get a telephone call or you bump into them. And generally speaking, the first thing that they say to you is something to the effect of this. Wow, I was just thinking about you. Well, you created that moment by the fond memory of that individual. Unbeknownst to you, you use the exact principles of the idea or art of manifesting. No, I'm not really talking about the law of attraction. I'm talking about an art, a thing that we all do. I don't know about you, but I wasn't born with an eraser in my hand. Uh, meaning that we cannot undo anything. We are perpetual creators in every single second of every single moment of our lives. Yes, we do that. I'm going to step into the field of astrophysics for a moment. Uh, because there are three principles out there that we as humans wield and we don't even know it. Here they are. You can look anywhere in the universe and there are three and three constants only no matter where you look. The first one is, is there's an electrical field or charge, there's a magnetic field or charge, and then there's a gravitational field or charge. We are like an electromagnet. The difference between us and an electromagnet is the fact that you can turn the electromagnet off, but you cannot turn you or I off in the sense of that electromagnetic field. We are literally electromagnetic field generators. We can draw to us like a magnet or we can push things away from us just like a magnet and we do it all constantly but subconsciously. Look at the cycles in your life. We all have them. Why do we have those cycles? Because we create them. Now let's take those three ideas presented by uh, astrophysics and let's apply it to the human. Your heart, your feelings, or your emotions are your electrical charge that you give to things. The magnetic charge is your mind, your thoughts, your thinking. Those two combined create the gravitational pull to bring to you the very experience the idea or the thing that you wish to have in your life. When we focus that mind on a target and we love the end result of the experience of that target, you are applying two of the principles. The third will actually come to you. You don't have to go to it. This idea has been shared by me with a lot of people around the world. 
They're creating weather patterns and things that they would like to have. They're creating the level of, of success, monetarily speaking, that they choose, and even the love of their life by the principles that I'm sharing with you today. You see, in the art of manifesting, it's just simply focusing on a particular thing. Love having that experience, and it will find you very, very literally, and will become manifest in your life. Um, when you learn to wield it and use it with wisdom, you can indeed have anything. Here's how most of us actually use it. It's as simple as this. We worry. We worry about not having the very things we want. There goes my camera again, deciding to do what it wants to do as opposed to what I would like it to do. Oh, well. Um, here's what I mean by that. You can't go from ill health to health. You cannot go from lack to abundance. That's just not humanly possible. Uh, you can have one or the other. When you worry at the beginning of the month that you don't have enough money to pay your bills, uh, I can promise you, you're creating lack. Most of us experience lack consciousness in our lives. And we're the very ones that end up creating that. You create the lack. You create the ill health by simply focusing on the very thing that you really don't want to have to experience. Worry is just as powerful as fear or love, but love obviously is the positive one. So use positive energies on anything that you want. We humans like to believe that we have to know where something is going to come from. We're taught in this part of the world that you have to make it happen. No, what if you can simply allow it to happen? Um, one of the things I love asking people to do is focus on a simple phrase that you would like to hear. Love the sound of hearing that phrase. And then within about 48 hours, you will probably hear it. But let me assure you, if there's a moment of doubt, or even if you think to yourself, well, I wonder where that phrase is that Stephen Harefield told me I would hear. You may as well start all over again. Why? Because that's a form of doubt. It's having faith in yourself which is the fourth ingredient, that you have the ability right at your fingertips to have anything in life that you so choose. You put your mind on it, focus on it, see yourself having it in your mind, and then love the experience that what you are wanting to have. Um, and those two forces will draw it to you. As an example, if you want that great love in your life, then become that great love. And by so doing, you're going to manifest that great love. You want that monetary wealth? You have to see yourself having it and then trust in the fact that it will come to you. You don't need to know right away uh, or at all how it's going to show up as long as it does. That's the only thing that matters. For myself, I enjoy like one of my favorite movies is Top Gun. When I focus on Top Gun, I uh, go home one day and I have this sense to turn on the television and even which channel to pick and lo and behold there's Top Gun. You can do that with uh, a tune that you want to hear, a person you want to see, a monetary experience you wish to have. You can have any and or all of that. And forgive the talking face again as my camera decides to zoom in. I'll figure that out one of these days and how to stop that. But when you focus Make sure your focus is a positive focus, and you can have it. When, again, like an electromagnetic or electromagnet, when you worry about it, you're actually pushing it away from yourself, creating your own lack. So shift your mind into the positive side and take out the need to know of where it's going to come from, because I can promise you, like the example I gave of the movie, the universe is going to provide the circumstances with which the and be the vehicle with which um, it's going to become made manifest. It actually wants to help us. Now understand something. The universe has a sense of humor. It really does. Here's uh, kind of a humorous view, if you will. We have lack consciousness, and what we want is abundance. Well, if your consciousness is filled with lack, then what you're going to end up doing is creating an abundance of lack. Um, use the uh, ideas of prosperity or even affluence because they're a little more specific than the idea of abundance. But the key here when you're doing that is if you want material substance, uh, money, 
see stacks of money, just stacks. Don't put a limit on it. Allow the universe to give you those stacks of money and love having those stacks of money and then let it go. Now when I say let it go, I mean that literally. It's almost to the point of simply forget it. Release it. If you don't release it, the universe can do nothing with it. That would be giving you an analogy. It would be like um, calling a good friend, leaving him a voice message to call you back, but you never hang up your phone. Well, if you can't, if you don't hang up your phone, how can they call you back? Holding on to the very thing that you're attempting to manifest is in essence doing the same thing. The analogy that I'd like to give you, there's two of them, is when you have that whimsical thought of a friend that you, had, uh, uh, that you haven't seen in a long time, it's whimsical, so therefore there's nothing there to hold on to, so you let it go. Just as soon as you let that go, you increase the odds that you're going to have an encounter with the very person that you are desiring to see, if you will. Um, so the same is true with anything you're attempting to manifest. Now let me share this idea with you. You see, when you think of that friend, it has no power, but I can make you a promise. If the Creator is correct and we have dominion over all things, that means we are more powerful. doesn't mean we're better than, we're more powerful than anything out there. And if money, as an example, has more power than you do, you cannot create it. Why? Because the universe won't give you what has or contains more power than you do. All right. So you want to give nothing that level of power. You maintain that power yourself. By maintaining that power yourself, you become the power point and it will be attracted to you. Now, as I suggested earlier, this is a thumbnail sketch of the art of manifesting. The full download of my website is literally entitled The Art of Manifesting, A Monk's Perspective. If you'd like to know all the ins and outs, and I've given you actually enough information today to where you can use the ideas that's uh, uh, been presented. But the whole key here is to practice it. So think of simple phrases. Heck, even put it in a context. And you watch. When uh, you do it appropriately, it indeed will show up in your life and you'll be able to have that experience for yourself. And the more confidence you gain in that ability and that power, the easier manifestation becomes. So begin by thinking of a simple phrase. Put it in the context. Now, here's the interesting part. It doesn't matter whether you see it on a billboard, hear it on a radio, hear it on television, have a friend deliver or an absolute stranger deliver it. How it gets there is not the point. My message, continue practicing in every moment. As already shared, we do not have an internal on and off switch when it comes to the idea of manifesting. We simply don't. We are always on when it comes to manifesting. And if we're always on when it comes to manifesting, remember that. Because you, like I, were always in the mode of creating and creation. After all, we are just like the Creator. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Stephen Harefield. Once more, you can check out my website at www.airfield.com. And I also have many books out there that are available to you that will help you understand the dynamics of your own nature. Thank you.